Le preguntó por qué estaba en contra de los niños que se autoperciben de otro género que han transicionado si esto les hace felices. Marbos le preguntó, ¿cómo sabía que esa premisa era cierta? Y la tía Progre dijo que le habían dicho y además que podría encontrarlo en Google. Mark Walsh arremetió con sentido común y preguntas que demostraron las falacias de la progre y lo verás en este video. En él, una progre afirmaba que se debe hormonizar y realizar cirugías en niños que se autoperciben de otro género dado que esto evita que cometan el Mira el video completo y dime si Mark Walsh tiene razón o no. Pero antes, si te gusta este contenido, suscríbete al canal, tenemos la meta a corto plazo de llegar a los 100.000 suscriptores. Sin mayor dilación, comencemos. So, you've talked a lot about the mental illness and depressed and anxious population in the trans community. But you don't talk about the happy people in the trans community and how these preventative measures of let's say like puberty and the surgeries that go for gender affirmation and how these are life-changing and life-saving. I know so, so, many people How do you know? Oh, okay. One second, if I can finish my conversation. Um, <laughs> okay. Many people in my life have had these interventions made and it's saved their lives. I can list dozens of people in my life. So what do you have to say for... You can, you can list dozens of people who had surgeries and drugs as children and would be dead today if they hadn't? I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Dozens of people who have had interventions, including gender affirming, let's say therapies, um, yes, hormones, surgeries that have made their lives better. I'm not saying it didn't force them to commit suicide, but it made their lives better. What do you have to say for the happy trans community? Uh, I guess I would, I would throw back at you first uh, because the burden of proof is on you on this one. And I'll explain why the burden of proof is on you because as I went over in the talk, um, for thousands of years, human beings existed and there was no such thing as trying to medically transition people into another gender. And as far as we know, there was no because of it. And then in the last few years, people like yourself have come along and said, we desperately need to do this or people will be in despair. And so you are making a claim that contradicts common sense, science, biology, also the entire experience of the whole history of the human race. And so what that means is that the burden of proof is on you to support it. And so I'm going to ask you, you said that people need this stuff so they can live happier lives and potentially to, to, it'd be life saving, you said even. Aside from your anecdotes of your friends who told you so, how do you know that? Okay, so um, thinking back to when I was 16 in an anatomy class, when I learned that um, transgender people tend to have the brain structure that confirms their identity that they identify with. And you can look that up. That, that's I, a fact. I will look that up. Yeah, it's a fact. I will it's look that up, but I won't find it. <laughs> yeah. It's not a fact. Oh. It's not a fact. Should we all pull out Google really quick and look? Okay. Um, so you're saying a trans man has the brain of a woman? No. I'm saying that a trans man who identifies as a man will tend to have similar brain structure that a cis man would. And where did you get that from? Look it up. I, it's okay. literally, I, I'm telling you, I learned it from my anatomy class when I was I, 16. And I looked up the fact before I walked up here because I knew that you'd ask. Okay. Um, that's not true, but it also doesn't answer the question. So let, let's try to stay focused on one false claim at a time if we can, because we, we might get bogged down. Okay. So you said, you actually started by saying that blocking puberty, which is chemical of a child. Just is, as one example, yeah. Yeah, is life-saving. It can be. How do you know? Because there are children who have been that have had these interventions made. What children? How do you, how do you know? How, how many children have had that done and then I are still suicidal? Uh, me personally, I haven't met enough trans children to answer that question. You, okay. But I know you that are the making, research exists. You're making this statement, you're stating it as a fact in front of all these people. There must be a reason, there must be something that you encountered that, that led you to this rather radical conclusion that to save a child's life, you have to chemically... Not Lupron, every child. no, sir. Okay, well that is what you just said. 
The drugs we give to kids for, for puberty blockers, so-called puberty blockers, originally are, are cancer drugs used to treat prostate cancer. They're also used to chemically castrate in childhood. Now we give them to physically healthy kids. You're saying that we need to do that or they will die. And so one last time I'm going to ask you, what evidence do you have of that remarkable claim? I don't think I claimed that every child would benefit from that. Well, no, I didn't uh, say you did. And, okay. You, you well, said you, puberty no, blockers you did. are you, you, did. Um, you said puberty blockers are life saving. What evidence do you have they, for that? I said they can be. Um, so, the evidence you know? is the encounters with patients who have had these procedures done, and it has saved their. I don't want to say it saved their lives, but it has made their lives better. I can't confirm whether or not they're alive right this second, but there are children that it has helped. So what do you have to say for the happy trans community who has benefited from these procedures? That's my well, question I guess what I have you. to say is that your entire question is built on a whole stack of false premises that you, that you can't begin to even remotely defend. So uh, I, it's, it is a, it's a faulty question from the start. I, I reject your premise. I, I absolutely reject that there are any kids who need to be chemically in order to be happy. Okay, okay, okay. Abordaremos la falacia que propone la progre de que está demostrado que en personas trans existe una estructura cerebral que corresponde con el sexo con el que se autoperciben. Es algo que es imposible, dado que existen algunas diferencias estructurales y funcionales en el cerebro entre hombres y mujeres, pero es esencial destacar que estas diferencias son generalizaciones y no determinan el comportamiento individual. La variabilidad dentro de cada género es considerable, y las similitudes son más predominantes que las diferencias. Los estudios han sugerido que, en promedio, los cerebros de los hombres tienden a ser ligeramente más grandes que los de las mujeres. Sin embargo, el tamaño no está directamente relacionado con la inteligencia o las habilidades cognitivas. Se ha observado que el hipotálamo, una parte del cerebro involucrada en la regulación hormonal, difiere en tamaño entre hombres y mujeres. El hipotálamo es una pequeña región del cerebro que desempeña un papel crucial en la regulación del sistema endocrino y la homeostasis del cuerpo. Esta área desencadena y controla diversas funciones corporales, incluida la liberación de hormonas, la regulación del apetito, la temperatura corporal y la respuesta al estrés. En términos de diferencias de tamaño entre hombres y mujeres en el hipotálamo, algunos estudios han encontrado variaciones. En particular, se ha observado que el hipotálamo anterior, una subdivisión específica del hipotálamo, puede mostrar diferencias de tamaño entre géneros. Algunas investigaciones han indicado que las mujeres pueden tener una mayor conectividad entre los hemisferios cerebrales, mientras que los hombres pueden tener una mayor conectividad dentro de cada hemisferio. La cuestión de la conectividad cerebral entre los hemisferios cerebrales en hombres y mujeres ha sido objeto de interés en la investigación neurocientífica. Se han realizado estudios utilizando técnicas avanzadas de neuroimagen, como la resonancia magnética funcional y la tractografía por imágenes de resonancia magnética, para investigar cómo las redes cerebrales difieren entre géneros. Por otro lado, se ha planteado la idea de que los hombres pueden tener una mayor conectividad funcional dentro de cada hemisferio cerebral. Esto implica una comunicación más intensa y específica dentro de regiones cerebrales en el hemisferio izquierdo o derecho. Se ha sugerido que esta mayor conectividad intrahemisférica podría estar relacionada con un enfoque más focalizado en tareas específicas. ¿Y tú qué opinas? Déjamelo saber en los comentarios. Y aquí culmina este video, si te gustó dale like, comenta y comparte, gracias, hasta luego.